Okay, welcome to the Queen Anne's County Commissioner's meeting. This is a public meeting that is being aired live on our local cable television station, QAC-TV7. These media broadcasts provide county citizens an opportunity to watch and review our scheduled public meetings. In addition to our live audience this evening, we are providing remote options for citizens to watch and participate in county commissioner meetings. Citizens may watch our meeting live on our website at qac.org slash live or on our television channel, BreezeLine Channel 7 and High Definition Channel 507. Citizens may also participate by joining the live Zoom meeting by going to qac.org slash public comment. Citizens may also email comments to public comment at qac.org. Comments received will be summarized during the present public comment period on tonight's agenda. We acknowledge everyone's participation and by attending you acknowledge that this session is both recorded and aired. Press and public comment will be taken and is limited to three minutes per person. If you do wish to speak, please sign the sheet on the information table in the lobby. Comments longer than three minutes can be submitted in writing for the commissioner's review. We will now stand and be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Commission <clears throat> President Jim Moran. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you can remain standing for a moment of silence for three lives lost in Annapolis, apparently over parking. Thank you very much. All right, commissioners, uh, the agenda for today's meeting, June 13th, along with the regular minutes and the closed session minutes from May 23rd. In addition to that, the budget hearing minutes from May 22nd and May 24th have been circulated for review. Do we have any additions or corrections? Uh, motion to approve the agenda as submitted and the minutes as submitted. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right. Thank you, commissioners. So we just held a uh, closed session under the general provisions article section 3, 305B1 to discuss boards and commissions. And I believe we have a couple board members we want to appoint. So um, first. For the local management board, uh, I move to reappoint Scott Evans and appoint Giselle Cottrell, Michelle Johnson, Lynette Lamp, Gail Lundberg, and Alana Van Ornum as the student representative. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Okay. Uh, for the Department of Emergency Services Advisory Council, I move to reappoint Sandra Early, Ben Hammock, Steve Souter, um, and to appoint Gabriel Ripley as a new member of DSAC. And also, before we ask for a motion, a, a second, I want to thank Faye Williams for the many years that she served on DSAC as one of the citizens. Um, she served on that board clear back in 2010 in my first term. So, Faye, if you're watching, thank you very much. Second. So we have a motion and a second on this item. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Okay, thank you. So we are now ready for our first press and public comment period. So thank you for taking the time to express your views to the county commissioners. Comments are limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes can be submitted in writing. This commission respects your desire and right to convey your message freely. When you come forward, please speak clearly at the standing microphone. State your name, address, and topic of interest. And in keeping with the dignity of our office, we ask that all views be expressed in a respectful and civil manner. Mr. Brian DeMoss. Brian DeMoss. Up here. Yep, sir. Right up here. That one, Brian. Oh, that one. Okay. Good, good evening, gentlemen, ladies. My name is Brian DeMoss. I am a lifelong resident of Queen Anne's County. Um, I also own the Economic Development Board for Northern the County for Queen Anne's County, and I own a small business called Chesapeake Burial Vault, which I employ 45 or so people. 60% of them, I'm proud to say, live in Queen Anne's County. 
I do all my business in Queen Anne's County and surrounding counties, keep every, my tires. I have 250 tires on the road. Um, and I got my first lollipop at Queenstown Bank, and I'm still going there when I was four years old. Um, I'm here tonight. I just want to thank the commissioners first for helping with the sewer at Barclay and Sellersville and now in Quimby because you have no idea. We worked on that for 15 years. I'm no longer a commissioner because I moved out of town. Um, but I just wanted to thank you for that. Um, here on other business, later on we're going to be doing the, the uh, applications or, or for the uh, land preservation. And I own a farm at six, uh, 651 L Downs Road, Henderson, which backs up to Albert Downs' farm. And we currently, uh, I've recently had my farm surveyed, and um, Mr. Downs is trying to do an adverse possession of my farm, part of my farm, because in 2007 or 8, they put in irrigation, pivot irrigation without a cert. They never got the land has never been surveyed, and I'll talk about that later. But uh, during the hearing for that, but that's why I'm here. I'm here to ask the commissioners to pull his application, and because we're going to go under litigation on this, and I don't feel it's in best interest of me or the county to have that application for land preservation until this is settled. But we'll talk more about that when I present you at that time. Thank Happy you very much. You. Uh, Tim, Tim Edelman. Thank you. Tim Adelman, I live at 404 Queens Court, Stevensville. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I've, my family's lived in this county for over 25 years, and we think it's obviously one of the best counties to be in, and that's thanks to the county government. Today, you're going to be asked to approve the resolution for the FY24 budget. And in there, there's a pretty small item, but it actually has a pretty big impact on a number of families, and that's the renovation of that rink down at Bats Neck Park. Um, we support the budget, we support the renovations down there, but our understanding is that the intended purpose of renovating that rink is to restore it to its current status, which is an asphalt rink used for inline hockey, which appeals to a limited number of people. And what we're proposing, uh, and I have a number of families here now and others that unfortunately are not here because they have to go outside the county to practice tonight, uh, is to turf that arena so it would be available for lacrosse, for soccer, and for field hockey. Specific to lacrosse, there's over 300 families now in the Kent Island Rec League that have to travel every weekend out of this county for the sport. We're the two-time defending state champions in this county, and we don't host a single lacrosse event here. And what we're asking is to have that turf arena created to host box lacrosse, as well as other sporting events, which would appeal to over 1,000 families. And also, it would be a revenue-generating source for the county because it would be leased out for those events. It's a modest investment. So we're asking two things of the county commissioners. One is uh, to direct the Parks and Rec to continue with the renovation of that rink, but make it a multi-use facility, not just inline hockey. A turf arena gives us the ability to use it for many sports and satisfy a number of families. We don't have to ask our grandparents and kids and all, all everyone else to travel outside this county. Currently, the only place to play this now is a makeshift place in Anne Arundel County, so we could become the home of box across in this region, which is a growing <clears> sport. We have. I had given you an email earlier on. There was 25 kids registered on one team last year uh, that traveled out of this county. There is hundreds of kids that are registering for the sport, but we have limited field access and limited facilities. So we're asking to make Queen Anne County a home base for that. Um, and in addition, we're asking that the county look at opportunities for private public partnerships to help enhance the resources to help give us more access to fields. The biggest problem with youth sports right now, especially outdoor sports, is access to fields. And we don't have enough of them. Um, Howard County is where all these kids go every single weekend. 8 a.m. games on a Sunday morning leaving this county is not ideal. Uh, we would rather be playing them here, and I think you all have the ability to make that happen. So I appreciate the time and ask that as you approve the budget, you keep that in mind. Thank you. Yep. Uh, that's all we have is signed up. Would anybody else like to speak? Seeing none, we're going to close press and public comment. Uh, Tim, I would suggest you, you take your entire organization and whoever else feels strongly about this and come to the next PRAB meeting. Uh, the Parks and Recs Advisory Board is where the decisions are made on what we do to what fields and what projects uh, ultimately get funded. Because we get a list from the PRAB that comes to us and then we approve it or disapprove it. But it's the best place for you to start and I, I think you'll get some results. Okay. Thank you. All right, commissioners, uh, the next uh, item on the agenda is uh, under tab seven, legislation. 
And um, we have the agricultural preservation easement applications. And this is a public hearing. And we have uh, Donna Landis Smith. She will be uh, administering the hearing tonight. I think there are 11 properties on the list this year. So I will turn it over to Donna. And a board member. And a board member, yeah, Mr. Scott McGlashan, who we all know. All right, Mr. Yeah, Scott McGlashan is one of the all members right. of the Legal Ag Advisory Board, and okay. he asked to accompany me tonight. All so right. first, I would like to do the cert certificate or certificate of publication for the advertisement of the new applicants. Notice of hearing, it was uh, advertised in the Bay Times Record Observer June the 2nd and Bay Times Record Observer June the 9th. Notice of hearing pursuant to the Agricultural Article Section 2-504 of the Annotated Code of Maryland, the County Commissioner of Queen Anne's County will hold a public hearing June the 13th, 2023 at 5.35 p.m. in their office at 107 North Liberty Street, Centerville, Maryland. The hearing is held to receive public comments on establishment of agricultural preservation easement applications on the lands owned by the following petitioners. Dino Farms LLC, 6th Election District, tax map 46, parcel 13, 179 and a half acres. Michael and Virginia Foster, 2nd Election District, tax map 29, parcel 4, 105.753 acres. Thomas and Dorothy Gannon, 3rd Election District, tax map 35, parcel 20, 77 and a half acres. Leverage Farm LLC, 7th Election District, tax map 10, parcel 6, 173.772 acres. Leverage Farm LLC, 7th Election District, tax map 10, parcel 5, 127.129 acres. Francis and Glenda Messick, 6th Election District, tax map 68, parcels 15 and 29, 247.176 acres. Michael Messick, 6th Election District, tax map 68, parcel 10, 131.753 acres. D. Wayne and Barbara McFarlane, 2nd Election District, tax map 30, parcel 47, 92.539 acres. Dorsey Patchett Jr. and Dorsey Patchett III, 2nd elec Election District, tax map 23, parcel 13, 345 acres. A. Downs Warren, 1st Election District, tax map 31, parcel 40, 198.9 acres. Ralph C. and April D. Whaley Jr., 2nd Election District, tax map 30, Parcel 42, 189.44 acres. The Agricultural, the Queen Anne's County Agricultural Preservation Advisory Board has given favorable recommendations to the county commissioners in submission of the Agricultural Preservation Easement application. Direct any comments or questions regarding agricultural preservation to Donna Landa Smith at the Queen Anne's County Soil Conservation Office. 211 East Water Street, Centerville, Maryland. 21617-443-998-988. Nine eight eight four one seven eight. All hearing sites are accessible to individuals with disabilities. Sign language interpreters and assistive listening devices will be available for individuals with hearing impairments. Please contact Human Resources at 410-758-4406 or TDD 410-758-2126 seven days before the hearing date if the above is needed for the meeting. Queen Anne's County Board of County Commissioners, Margie Hack, clerk to the County Commissioners. Testimony? That would be, it would be time to open up for public, public comment. comment. Here we go. Yes. So, Mr. Brian DeMoss, you're first and only up. Sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. Can I talk on hand them out? <laughs> if you want to hand them to Margie, she'll make sure they get sent down through us. So what I did was how to print out, uh, and this contained in the A Downs, Warren's property, uh, tax map 31, partial 40, 198 acres. Uh, if you look at the first page, as a recorded uh, survey I was done by by extreme measures Buck Nickerson over in, out of Kent County on the map the next one is 2005 and you can see the the lines not disturbed he's telling his side they're telling my side which I didn't known at that time 2007 you're gonna see the same thing exact same thing mm -hmm. when you get to 2011 
You can see where the pivot irrigation had been put in and now the encroachment on my property. That small sliver down there um, is, what the, uh, is what they're trying to take from me, okay? Because the irrigation, and he had put new irrigation in this year and it's not, going on, not coming over on me, but they refused to re relinquish that and they're trying to do it adverse conditions 20 years but as you can see, that's 2007, 2011, so it hadn't been there that long. Um, as I, as my, one of my things is, is that uh, how do you get a permit for irrigation, pivot irrigation, without a survey? There's no recorded survey of that property in Queen Anne's County, unless somebody can tell me something different. We've done all, had all the research done and everything. So and I'm, I'm saying that, you know, and now I've got a letter from his lawyer saying that if I don't adhere to what they want, then we're going to end up in court, which that's where we're going. I've hired legal counsel already, and um, I didn't feel necessary for them to be here tonight. But, uh, you know, I work hard. I work hard. I come up from nothing. I make payments to Queenstown Bank on this property, and I want which, which belongs to me. So I'm asking the county commissioners to pull this application until we get this straightened out. Ryan, is this your property here on the bottom? Yes, okay. that's my property and at the bottom. this is the encroachment? That's the encroachment okay. right there, yes, mm -hmm. in the irrigation. Yeah, they're trying to use a 20-year adverse. There's a law, but like I say, that shows 2011. 2007 one, there's nothing there, so it's not 20 years to begin with, but i got to start somewhere. Unfortunately, i got to start here tonight because I can't, you know, I want with my, my integrity is the only thing I have that belongs to me that nobody can take from me, and I'm not going to lose it. And this is just wrong, as far as I'm concerned. And for a man that owns thousands of acres to try to take, it's not even a half an acre ground, but it messes up my perfect property line, which I purchased with my hard-earned money. So. Okay. Any questions? Yes, uh, none for you. Okay. None for you. Thank you. So, Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all have a great day. Amazing. Scotty, there's this person here. Oh, Donna, what do you want? You um, well, no, it, it, this is well. It's oh, all. Sorry, wait a minute, wait a minute. Go ahead. We have somebody else. You. I, I signed up out there, but she may not. Uh, she must have moved. Right. Okay. Come on up. A bit too yeah. fast for you, Jay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Too fast for you. I Good evening, commissioners. Jay Falstead from Queen Anne's Conservation Association, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. As I look down this list and putting aside any uh, issues concerning litigation. Um, this is a pretty incredible list, uh, and when you look at it in its context, that this is almost 1,900 acres, and you add to that the number of farm landowners in Queen Anne's County that have already enrolled, that are on the list, um, this is a great story for Queen Anne's County. And so I hope as you um, consider these uh, farm landowners and add them to the list <coughs> and hopefully fund them. Uh, this is just a good story to tell. It's something that we can be proud of. Queen Anne's County is the largest grain producing county in the state of Maryland. Uh, we should all be proud of that. But this land, these land preservation efforts and what you all have done as commissioners in helping to fund it is really a success story that we should all be very proud of. So I just wanted to um, show my support for this and uh, thank you very much for your time thank you is there anybody else would like to speak on on the uh, land preservation topic seeing them we'll we'll close the uh, press and public or the public comments portion so uh, getting back there the issues um, with mr. Downs property uh, I'm looking for guidance from well you know the first thing I wanted to say and mr. Moss brings up a very good subject and something that um, your current clerk of court, Catherine Hager, is going to bring to you. Um, it's the one thing that was, it was off my bucket, on my bucket list I didn't get done. But when you look at the, take a look at the real property article, State of Maryland Annotated Code 3.108.1, which is the recording code uh, for Queen Anne's County specific. What I encountered as clerk, when I was clerk of court, people would come in and they say well we just inherited daddy's farm and he had a survey in 1950 and we want to get a copy of the plat well we would look but unfortunately it, it is not and this is what i'd like to see that i've talked to steve aarons about this Doug and Aarons. i'd like to see a requirement that any uh, licensed surveyor that performs a survey in queen anne's county 
that by law has to record that plat with the clerk. But what would happen is people would come in, and yes, it was it was surveyed. Yes, it uh, well, and no, it wasn't recorded because the law doesn't require that. And and so they, those people left the clerk's office, the bureaucracy, thinking one of two things: a, we couldn't find it, or b, we don't want them to see it. And and, and it's 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 just. It's a bad situation. So that's a, aside from what I came here tonight to talk about, but Mr. DeMoss brings, brings a good point. I don't know if that property was surveyed. It may be, it may be in some surveyor's files. Bill Nuttall, which was, who was a premier surveyor, uh, saw that problem. And he was on a committee when we were going to work on this legislation, didn't get it done. But he did create a cadastra in Kent County that he gave all his work over to the clerk and it's there and it resides at the clerk's office and the Maryland State Archives for surveyors that younger folks that came along to be able to see his work. And so uh, Mr. Moss may want to look at that. If Bill Nuttall surveyed it, it may be in Kent County, but people can't find it because it's not on plats.net, which Sam Stanton uh, the, the Four Seasons thing, you remember that fiasco, and that's how we got, got squared away on, on, on that situation. But, well, I guess, uh, I guess my concern is if, if we move forward with these, uh, this, um, we have notice of an issue, and if we move forward, is that correct? Right. Problem, yeah. right? Thank you. Yeah, there has to be remedied, I would so think. The record's but, open for two weeks anyway, right now typical to what we do for a hearing. So the record will be open. But I guess my question to you, Scott, maybe you know or don't know the answer. When we developed the GIS system here for the tax maps, mm -hmm. a lot of that was uh, longitudinal, latitudinal, I believe, based on surveys. So if what you're saying is true, then a lot of the GIS information we're using probably isn't correct then, correct? Would, would that be a fair statement? I, I, I can't. I, I don't know enough about the GIS system to be able to answer that question. But what did happen was that, and in the Four Seasons case proved that, that if you make a copy of a copy of a copy, you lose the dimension. So then, yes, you do lose the Latin long. But, and also, Bill Nuttall pointed out to me, there may be a survey, my farm was just surveyed, and, and it was surveyed even back further, but that was only that surveyor's opinion as far as where the meets and bounds are. There's a big case out, um, Oh, next to Jimmy the Towers farm, big brouhaha. And it was a fellow trying to pull the same trick of adverse possession. And, and as it, I was actually involved in that, and the county had to represent me as the mouth administrator for right. that for that adverse possession case. Yeah, and uh, so it, it's it's going to be in litigation, and, and it's got to be remedied. So, as I would assume before so mouth is going to be accepted. And hold this one over out of the package um, so, to, there's, so that we're not holding up the other applicants? Yes. So there's two things that you could do. We could go two different routes. In the application, um, when the landowners apply, it has a section in the application that it says if any questionable boundary disputes or any type of um, court case that you can let it go through the process, the application, but then what will happen when a title search is done, they will find this problem. So, but if we know going in right. that it's going to be a litigation about a property line, you may not want to approve it, and that's up to your discretion. I was unaware of this until Mr. DeMoss just brought it to my attention. Um, if this, if I had known this, I would have probably not submitted the application because it specifically says in the mouth application if there is a question about a dispute over a property line that that right. cannot be submitted yeah, submitted so that right. would not to impact any of the rest right. of the applications so i would say we'll keep the hearing open but let's a consensus to pull that one for now until Absolutely. the litigation is yeah. and it would be based on the resolution of the ter determination of the property line and it was before you all's um, appointment as county commissioner. So this exact same thing happened on Sarah Senecal's farm on 213 that was it. going that was down towards Wine Mills. Todd, you right. may recall it. I don't know oh. if you do or not. There was a, there's always a, what we call a wood lot that goes with the farm from many, many, many years ago when you have a large farm, you had to have a wood lot that was associated with the farm because of chopping firewood for heat. 
the neighbor had been hunting that woods for over 20 years illegally, went to court and wanted to claim adverse possession on that piece of woods because he hunted there. And it was already in land preservation, and I did the exact thing that I did with Mr. DeMoss. When you apply for land preservation, I send all the adjoining landowners a letter saying they're going to apply. If you have a question or oppose or uh, are in favor of the application, that you would need to come to the public hearing. Well, in the Sarah Senegal case, the neighbor, neighbor never came to the public hearing. And when we went to court, and it was months and months and months in court about this, the simple fact that I had a copy of that letter and a copy of when I sent it out, and he never attended the public hearing, it was thrown out of court and he lost because it legally was not his property. It, it was in the deed and it was written in the deed and described the wood lot that went with this property. And in reference to what you asked, Jack, um, I have found over many, many years, and I had someone come in today that applied last year, he has a survey plat that was done in the 70s by Mr. Nuttall, <laughs> but was not recorded in the land records. And go. I think it was a simple fact of people didn't want to spend the money to record the survey. Right. They had it done. They kept it thinking it was a valid document, and it's not. The state will not accept the survey that's not recorded in the land records. It's, and the GIS reference, Sam has taken deeds and plotted these properties according to the deed, but a lot of the old deeds were written in perches and strides, which are not accurate. Because right. your stride is quite different than my stride. <laughs> right, exactly. And that's, that's what I'm getting to. So is there, is there going to be probably more of these where you're going to have sections that are not going to match? I mean, I'm just curious. Yes. Maybe Amy can come in and brief us on that, how they filled in, because I guarantee you they exist. Yes. There's gaps. I, know, if, if they were doing it I had two farms in 2008 that entered into land preservation applications that got accepted. And when the state says you get accepted, you're going to get funded, but the farm has to be surveyed. Both of those farms were 40 acres less than what their deed that's, had that's said for years because it had been passed down through their family. They had no reason to have it surveyed. But when they found the iron rod markers in the woods and they plotted it out and the surveyor did their work, it was 40 acres less. And when you start talking about four or $5,000 for land preservation, well, it's hundreds is, of thousands of dollars. And the taxes on it, who's absolutely, absolutely. The taxes on it for however they many They had been years paying on it for 100 they, years, right, but they didn't have they didn't the have land. To. Yeah, so. and, and it was ironic in Sarah Seneca's case, I clerked that, Tom Ross had that case, and I clerked it because I wanted to know about it and understand it. And um, there was a case there where, this, here again, surveyors, well, that gentleman claimed that the mark was somewhere, and Jack uh, Kirby went out there and said, "No, no, no." He said he went out there and he found he found the the, the monuments, but that that's tough sometimes because yeah. in uh, Mr. DeMoss's case, I, I don't know there's spot there. I know there's a deed to the property, but it's going to be interesting how descriptive the deed is because it should be, give meets and bounds. But as Donna points out. It can be in chains, purchases, rods, you know, right. but but that can also be, you know, that can be uh, converted. So uh, it's very difficult to find rods or monuments yeah. in a tillable field, <laughs> or the old or oak or tree, yeah, you know, the old you oak know, tree down on the corner. Right. And the know. roads have been widened oh. since a lot of these yeah. original deeds were written up. So it's very difficult, and you know, but the, you do have the option to not approve that particular application. But Donald, or, what that? If we, we pull this out, mm -hmm. then the issue gets resolved between the property owners. Mm -hmm. Is Mr. Warren out of line now, or can he get back For in For this line? year, yes, because they have to be oh, yeah. submitted to the state and approved by, I think, the, it's usually July the 1st, and I believe July the 1st is on a Saturday. What would happen? Would, it, would there be a substitute property that we put in? It's too late to do that so, because I would have to have another public hearing, and I, I ran out of time. Okay, so so you said earlier one of the, the first option that we had was to go ahead and improve all 11, and then, then it, it was determined that this property, in fact, did belong to Mr. Moss. What happens then? We would reduce the acreage on the application. But his application still stays in? Yes. Just minus the acreage that belongs to So if it be determined that, that it's Moss. an acre, 
then the application would be. And I, I don't want based... to just pull out Mr. DeMoss's property. Well, but see, here's the thing. I don't want. I don't. I don't believe it's fair that. I, I think. I think the fact that there there has to be research done, and 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 factual data to determine whose property it is. But I also don't want the applicant to lose his place in line. So, so we do have that option to approve all 11, and we, then we have two weeks. Then, so we then make adjustments. We can get Patrick in here at the next meeting to give us advice on that. That's what yeah. I think we should yeah. know. Well, and that's true. But it's, it, so you you need a vote this evening, though. We don't have to vote for two weeks. You need a vote this evening, we can hold or can we hold it for two we weeks? Vote two weeks. I did want to add one additional thing. If you look at the maps in the, if you look at the the aerial map that I included in your packet, there are three areas that Mr. Downs Warren is excluding. Those areas that are highlighted in blue. It's 42, page 42. So the mm -hmm. the south southernmost property line along Goldsboro Road is the property line in question. So he is not actually asking for that area to be put into land preservation. He's excluded. Is that page 14? I'm sorry. I don't know. 42. Don't page that. 42. Yeah, 42. Two. This one. So if you look at what I've highlighted in blue and there's yellow lines that says excluded acres, he's excluding 20 acres from the total parcel. So the, the blue rectangle on the right hand side of Goldsboro Road on the east side of Goldsboro Road, that southern corner property line where it butts up to the red, that's the property line in question. But that's not in the mouth? Either. That is being excluded from the mouth application. Okay. Well, then it, then that's two different issues, Correct. I would think. Correct. I mean, I, I appreciate what Mr. Moss says. It's a question on who owns that property, but, but it's, if that's not in part of the easement that's been applied for. It is not part of the application. Then it should be, be, so then you should okay be able to move forward. forward. Yeah, it yeah, should be able to move forward. I mean, correct, I don't, you know. Yes, that's right? correct. That is correct. We can approve all 11 then. Well, Mr. Demolish, would you agree with that? Well, it's not part of it. I wasn't aware of that. I can certainly give you a copy of this map. Okay. Well, we, we still well, hold we the, get, well, we have Patrick come and advise us on this, so we're doing it the right way at the next meeting. Two weeks. I mean, yeah. we, we always leave yeah. the hearings open for two weeks for comment. That's what I'm so, saying. I mean, so the bottom, not all that, because it goes down. He's asking for clean down in this part. So I mean, it's past just, the ditch, so it yeah, is. Oh, okay. yeah, it's past the ditch. Okay. It's clean down to here. Okay. On that, so it is in that. Okay. All right. All right. So that answers that. Mm. So you could do the, you know, one of two things, Jack. Exactly. You could approve the 10 for the exception of Downs Warrens' application, and then we could wait for. Uh, I, I, I don't know what you guys feel. I'm going to leave it open for two weeks. We can get some more. We can get some more information in that two weeks. As long as we approve it on the 27th, you're good by the first, right? Sure. So. If, Absolutely. If, so I'm thinking outside the box here. Uh -oh. Absolutely. If we hold it open for two weeks, could you go back to uh, Mr. Warren and see if you would voluntarily just exclude that another acre on the bottom? Yes. Or he could resolve his issues with Mr. DeMoss, right. too. It, but if he doesn't yeah. resolve them, he says it's mine, but if he pulls it out of mouth, and he just leaves that one acre hanging down there, and then they can just, and he doesn't Absolutely. lose preservation for the rest of it. And the survey will ultimately decide where that line is, and he will not have to have this property surveyed only until the state makes him an offer. So you're talking at least May of 24. Right, a year from Before now. that offer is made from the state, okay. if he does get an offer. And two weeks doesn't hurt you with with any of this okay so we'll hold it we'll see if you can get that resolved if he can say i'll remove an acre off the bottom and him and brian can hash it out and and uh this way okay. the worst case scenario he's still got a what is it 198 197 yes, that's correct yep and that way he doesn't lose that and brian doesn't lose a piece of his property and it gets resolved Margie's got Margie, you call. order another pizza. Margie's got call. <laughs> How many of these meetings have you been to? <laughs> that's the first time that's ever happened. Uh -huh. It's that because I'm here, Margie. That's yeah. right. Is that Patrick Thompson on the phone about this? Yeah, that's it. Take a break. Margie needs yeah. some time. Just a, a, a little caveat on that survey issue. Uh, surveyors, somebody said, well, it wasn't recorded. Well, you might ask, well, why wasn't it? You know, and Vaughn is right. Sometimes the cost. And a lot of times people didn't know they could have it recorded. And that was done because some of the surveyors felt that that work was proprietary, that they owned that survey, which I think is hogwash, frankly. If I pay for the survey, that survey is mine. Right. And, and, I want it, and I want it recorded. 
So that, but Catherine and I will be back to you at some point uh, looking for support on um, changing or making it shall instead of may okay. in 3.108.1. So we're gonna, we're gonna hold this for two weeks. You're gonna get with Mr. Warren, Mr. Yes. Moss, see if they can hash it out. If they can't, remove an acre off the bottom. Sounds good. He, he can get the rest of it and Good work on it. Uh, mouth and away we go. That sounds like a great or, plan. Or we can pull him out and move forward with the others. No, we won't do. We, we'll get the. We'll, we're getting those acres. And these are just the new applicants. These are the people that have never applied before on these parcels. I did submit 20 applications in total, so there were 16 new farms and four repeats from the previous year. So the total of those 20 applications is 3,279 acres. But we could still get our other bite at the apple on the second round of funding, which yes, we've done well. and actually the the second round funding from last year's applicants comes in July. So we submitted um, 15 farms last year. We ended up getting second round offers from the previous year, so that backed it off to 13. Eight of those farms got funded through the first round offer. Um, you all pledged the county pledged 1.3 million. We ended up having 5,200,906. So you got a $5 return on your dollar investment. Nice. Yeah. So out of those, we got 1,200 acres, and I feel very, very confident, very confident, like 99% sure, we'll get two additional farms for a total of an, an additional 593 acres for 2.2 million. So we should end up with $6,850,000 6, okay, for good. our $1.3 million investment. So. Keep it up. Good yep. deal. All right. Yep. Yeah. Now, now, the reason I, that I'm here this evening, uh, of course, to support Donna most definitely, but I wanted to come and thank you first for appointing me to this board. Very interesting board, very important board. But also wanted to thank you, the commissioners, as Donna just pointed out, for your support of MAUF. And let me go, so, you know, because you pumped in a lot of money there. And this is for the QAC TV audience. I also want to thank the governor because the governor has pumped in a lot of money into mouth. But I wanted to give you this. I, I also publicly for the QAC, the citizens of Queen Anne's County. This lady, oh, yeah. oh, this yeah. lady oh, yeah. is the secret to our success. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, secret. yes, you are. <laughs> hey, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're reaching a target of, of having 100,000 acres under mouth. Correct. Out of 243,000 acres total in the county. Now, uh, Jay, you know, Jay Falstad stole some of my thunder, but he, he's right. It's a good news story. Yeah. But I also want to thank you and thank Todd. And if citizens should know this, but in the budget that someone mentioned earlier, that you have funded a position because unhappily, this young lady is going to Valhalla here in two years <laughs> and and so we're gonna lose her so she thinks yeah we, well we haven't, we haven't, voted on we haven't taken her yet. resignation yet well yeah, i'm yeah. working with i'm working with judge knight to get a court order you know to extend well, it we've already got her fitted for her ankle bracelet so don't worry about yeah. it. Sorry. i've already had people say to me you cannot retire until i get my farm in preservation <laughs> but, but here's so there's a here's a press release and 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 uh, there's a number here 10 counties that talked about easements Queen Anne's County had the highest number of easements at, as of this day seven for, for $3.8 million. And every, all the other counties are behind Queen Anne's County, behind this lady. It's her hard work. I, I commend you for getting this person coming on board to, to mirror with Donna, because this is a job that's gonna take a couple of years to learn. And, and, and unfortunately, I, I hope we, Donna said to me, well, you're going to get somebody better than me. I said, no, I don't think so. If, but if we can get somebody as, as good, good and that she can train, yep. then we've done something. So, Todd, thank you for recommending that to commissioners, you the commissioners for, for you know, for filling that position. But this Carroll is Carroll County on there, Jim. That's Carroll County still first. They have their own. I was going to say, we're chasing them. We just can't I know. They well, have their own them. county funded oh, program, and it's because of But Jack, of the now you let me move right into a segue, and I'm not going to beat on this too much, but you mentioned Carroll County. I did want to come tonight, and I wanted to, I wanted to just mention uh, perennial solar versus Washington County. But also, when you go to MACO, I was so disappointed with MACO in that legislation. As I understand it, the Public Service Commission now preempts you, no. the county commissioners. No. I'm glad to hear that. 
Cam, 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 Cam oh, was under the good tent, news. but they didn't get it. No. Good, good, good news. But uh, yeah, they, they not killed yet. it this time, but it's coming back. So, okay. And, and I've mentioned this already, Scotty, twice that we really have. Well, I'm to sorry, I didn't miss it. Well, no, just that we really have to be conscious of it coming back. Next Thank you, sir. Year Thank you, Commissioner. Hard to make sure that because that destroys the comp plan, it destroy, destroys planning and zoning. The, the solar, uh, perennial solar versus Washington County, that court opinion, I got it. It, it was a good opinion. It, Washington County had to do something. But the bright lights in, Hawaii, in Annapolis took that and changed it into something entirely different and wanted to preempt your authority as county commissioners, not yours, the 23 jurisdictions in Baltimore City. Now, that's bad stuff. Senate Bill 692, wasn't it? Hmm? Still fresh in my head, yes. Yeah, right, 692. And I listened to the testimony. I was so disappointed. I hate to say this because I'm a member of my grandfather and my father, and I'm a member of Farm Bureau. Farm Bureau remained silent, which was outrageous. Maryland grain producers remained silent. Matter of fact, their board of directors didn't even know anything about it. But it was rammed through so quickly. So, but the one thing when you go to Mako, Jack, is I heard Carroll County commissioners voted four to one the other day to only allow solar in their, their county on 20 acres max, no more than 20 acres. I don't know whether that's good or bad. I choose to think it's good because I don't want to see us give up one damn acre of tillable, good tillable farmland. I, that's going to get challenged, unfortunately. I can yeah, tell you that's, it's that's, politics. It right. is. I'll be the challenge. I was going to say that's pie in the sky at 20 acres. They're going to. PSC is yeah. going to run that over. But, I mean, you're right. I, I agree. You try anything. I mean, we look. We did. We, in, in, our, in my mind, we gave 2,000 along the transmission lines, which makes sense. That's where you put the stuff. Right. And to come in, and I don't know if you've heard the latest proposals, is to take 10,000 in Queen Anne's County, 10,000 in every eastern shore yes. county, uh, to get to 90,000. Well, uh, he's here this evening. He can verify this. Uh, Howard Dean, and he's the real deal. He's a, he's a real farmer. I, I just dabble at it. I'm just telling you, that's, that was came out of Governor Moore's task force. Well, but Howard and I attended a, a University of Maryland yes. project at, yep. at Chesapeake former College, and they made the statement that day that when they were going to uh, spread this across the state of Maryland, 75% yeah. was yep. coming to the eastern shore, 25% to the western shore. That is correct. Now, come on. Yeah, that's, that's outrageous. With no compensation, right? Right, right, right. Well, I, we, just, we I, just, I just say, look, yeah. at the, look at the state seal, folks. What do you see? Yeah. The farmer yeah. and the waterman. We, we Let's totally maintain agree. agriculture. So. Well, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. In two weeks, hopefully we'll have some answers and okay. we'll take care of this. I will get back in thank touch you. about that. Yep. Thank but you. Thanks for your support of mouth, gentlemen. Not a problem. Not a problem. All right, commissioners, uh, moving on, we can go into our presentations portion of the meeting tonight. So if you want to turn to tab number six, please. And our first... Uh, First up, we have a proclamation for Teacher of the Year. I believe she's here tonight. Yeah, uh, Miss Andrea uh, all, Schulte. All three come of on you up. can come, come on. right on up. Come on. Right up here. Yeah. In the middle. In the hot seat. In Phil's seat. Come on up. <laughs> come on up. I brought all my people. That's right. Seat. Seat. Yeah, well, please sit down. With you. Congratulations. Yeah, it's great. Yes. Has he got a challenge going for Jerry? Give her one. She already got one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, night, job, at, the night at the gala okay. when we announced right. it. So. <laughs> there you go. You guys helped me get there. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. Who would like to start? So, um, I'll, 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 you read it? Yeah, I'll kind of okay. run this. I'll take over okay. for you. Um, so I had the, I had the pleasure. Um, thank you, Dr. Salins, for um, being on the selection committee uh, for Teacher of the Year. And it's a daunting task at best. I think we read over 63 essays. Um, and then, of course, there was the oral interviews with the candidates. Um, and I think the selection committee got it right, without a doubt. Got it right. So with that, I'm going to read the proclamation. I also want to thank um, Coach Brendan Schulte, our uh, recipient's husband. He uh, actually helped write this. So, um, yeah, she said, <laughs> what did you just say? Oh, my gosh. On the spot. <laughs> the so <clears throat> it is with great honor that I read Proclamation 23-23. 
Whereas Andrea Schulte found her calling as a teacher while volunteering her time working with children in her home state of Pennsylvania. And whereas Andrea Schulte attended Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania, where she began her education in animation and excelled both academically and artistically. And whereas Andrea Schulte graduated from Edinburgh University in December of 2000 with a bachelor's degree in art education and received her master's degree in art therapy, art education from Edinburgh University in 2010. And whereas Andrea Schulte started her teaching career in Queen Anne's County in 2001 and has spent endless hours in and out of classrooms teaching students and empowering them to think freely by opening their minds to ideas knowledge and dreams. And whereas Andrea Schulte has taught science, math, uh, middle and high school art, and shares her love and excitement for these subjects with her students every day. And whereas Andrea Schulte has led destination imagination teams to world championships, she is the visual arts department chair, the advisor for the National Art Honor Society, art club, and Photography Club and co-advisor to the National Honor Society. And whereas Andrea Schulte enjoys being an active member of the Kent Island community, she chaired with other teachers for <coughs> the mom prom to raise money for the school's American Cancer Society Relay for Life and team. And whereas Andrea Schulte enjoys spending time with her husband, Brendan, and her sons, Caden and Gavin, she enjoys watching her sons play baseball traveling as a family and camping. Whereas Andrea Schulte is grateful for the opportunity to be the 2023-2024 Queen Anne's County Teacher of the Year and honored to represent such an amazing district, family, community, te and teachers of Queen Anne's County. And it's signed by the Queen Anne's County Commissioners. <laughs> so I, so I think I think between, so I, I believe between the time that you received this award, um, Dr. Salins, what else did she? Well, she, I'm going to let her share her news because she also received a, another prestigious award. At, a state, so, at the state level, what, what else yes, did you get? Um, I was named the Maryland State Secondary Art Teacher of the Year for the whole there school. There you go. <laughs> Oh, well done. You got it. Well done. Thank you very much. And, and really can we get a picture? Yes. Do we have someone that can take it? Jimmy, Jimmy, will you stand up and take a picture with your phone? Thank you. Uh, number one stop the season. Uh, huh? Out of town. Baseball problem. Uh, cool. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. 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 Good, good stuff, good stuff there. All right, commissioners, our next item on the agenda, also tab number six, this is on page two, is a resolution number 23-06, and this is for the adoption of the FY24 County Commissioner's Budget. And we have uh, Nicole Heffer here. <coughs> She's gonna... Motion to approve resolution 23-06. Second. Ready? Um, good evening. Uh, we have the budget resolution. Um, there's a few items I just wanted to go over with the capital and uh, operating budget changes for FY24. Um, if we start with the operating budget, uh, there was no change to the total overall operating budget, so it remained at 183.6 um, million, which is what we started with, went through all the budget hearings, budget work sessions, um, and the county commissioner proposed budget. 
The property tax rate remains the same at 83 cents um, per hundred dollars of assessed value. Income tax remain uh, income tax rate remain the same also. The only uh, adjustment to the operating budget was adding 35,000 for the police accountability board to the sheriff's budget which we balance by decreasing um, funding and contingency. So therefore, the overall expenditures remain the same and the revenue remain the same also. Um, and then if we look at the capital budget, there were some changes to FY24 and also all of the out years. Most of it. Can, can I just stop you right there real quick? Mm -hmm. that, that allocation um, for the police accountability board, what was the number originally? Or is that that was the original number, 32? We didn't really have a budget for the Police Accountability Board for the next fiscal year, so we added this in. We're hoping that we can get grant dollars to okay. supplant all of that okay. uh, for FY24. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Um, so the FY24 capital budget changed and also all of the out years. Uh, some of it resulted just from timing, shifting projects to different years um, or delay in moving forward. Um, and there was also some additions as well. The FY24 budget decreased by 10 million. Um, the majority of that was moving the detention center out from FY24 to FY25 and 26. We also added in a um, million dollars for public landings for the CBEC dredging, which is all grant funded. And then there was two changes, um, moving the rec center and also a change for animal services. So that was for the FY24 budget. We also changed the funding source and added, um, we had a million dollars for ARPA funding for the Chester water main project, um, but we changed funding for an additional and four and a half million of additional projects to fund with ARPA, which helped reduce the bond funding. Um, so the total bond funding went from 9.5 million down to 6.1 million for FY24. There were changes also FY25 through FY29. The total net change to all of the years for the capital was uh, 16 million, which mainly resulted from adding in the Marlin Farms Dominion Sewer Project, um, years 26 through 29, and also adding in some Board of Ed projects. Um, there were some non recurring requests that we added in in the out years uh, and some furniture for the admin building and also the high school expansion projects in 28 and 29. So that really made up the t majority of the change for the capital for the out years. Very good. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? So moved, 5-0. Thank you, right, Nicole. Thank Appreciate you. It. All right. Thank you, Nicole, for all your hard work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. All right, commissioners, that concludes all of our presentations for this evening. We can uh, now move into our action items. Uh, I believe first we have the Department of Public Works. So if you want to flip to tab two. And uh, first up, we have the um, renaming of Schooner Parkway to Paul Reed Smith Parkway. I move to rename Schooner Parkway to Paul Reed Smith Parkway. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, uh, Go to hold it up. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Go ahead, Vanna. And I Stand believe we're going to maybe have a little ceremony yes. scheduled uh, later uh, when we can actually uh, install this <laughs> down at. Uh, at the Chesapeake Bay Business Park at the uh, secondary entrance takes you right into the PRS Qatar's headquarters. So we're excited about that. Oh, I yeah. have one at home. We can we take it. Uh, I got one of the big daddy signs. We're going to have to, we're gonna have to electrify them things. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if he'll sign it before we put it up. Do you think autograph it before we put it up? Yeah. All right. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, for that, uh, we'll let you know. I guess we're going to schedule something in uh, the near future to, to actually unveil that at the at the location. So it's great. All right, uh, item number two on page two is a request for sewer and water allocation for parcel 204 Holdings LLC. This is for a 12-unit apartment building 
uh, down there uh, behind the Dunkin' Donuts in Stevensville. I move that we grant 1,650 gallons per day of sewer and water allocation to Parcel 24 Holdings LLC for the proposed 12-unit apartment building at a cost of 99300 for which 10% of non-refundable deposit will be required within the next 30 days. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? I just want, it, you guys just, I know there's some of the local businesses there that have some concerns about this project. So if you haven't already had a chance to reach out and discuss with them, I'm sure you can probably address some of their concerns. Can, can you come up? Yeah, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Just you and me, Alan. Okay. Favorite day. Okay. <laughs> you didn't know the day was going to turn out this great. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll get a wow. back. One hey, of these hey, days. That is oh, never I'll happened. You made him smile. There's uh -oh. something wrong here. Uh -oh. right now I've been trying a long time. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so we did meet with um, the owners of Cult Classic because they were primarily the, the mm -hmm. concerned party. I think they had a specific concern that was different than some of the other concerns you heard, which were more growth related. Uh, his concern was primarily um, related to the, the risk of you know, having people complain that would interfere with their growth of their business because they do a lot of you know, cool things, which we know, which we told him, we said, listen, we, we think it's awesome what you're doing. We, we know it's noisy. He wanted us to understand how busy they are with all the events they have planned, which is going to be cool, by the way. They are all the cool events. They've done a lot for the community, um, and we, so we understand his concern. Um, you know, they had they had wanted us to give them something like some kind of writing, some sort of commitment in writing that that wouldn't happen. But we simply can't do that, of course. So we said, what we can do is educate the potential tenants at the property. So this isn't the property where people are going to want to go when they want to have a very relaxed lifestyle where you know we're thinking this is the kind of property where someone's going to go who's in the hustle bustle they want to they want to run over to dunkin donuts they want to hit the bar at night right and walk home i mean you know if i was 20 years younger it'd be an awesome place to live but it isn't the place for everybody so when we sell just like when we sell how when we rent we have to you have to read your tenants and you have to we found that the most important thing to do is set the be, set an expectation properly up front so just like when we sell houses we say listen these are this is what to expect this is going to happen, this is going to happen, don't do this, don't do this, you know, because most misunderstandings come from a lack of a, of a disclosure, lack of disclosure and, a, and, a, and an improper expectation set, either set or just not addressed. Mm -hmm. So we have found that transparency is important. We expect to market their, what they're doing. You know, we, we find that as a marketing tool for us, quite frankly. You know, we think that's a draw for a specific kind of runner who's going to really want to live in that kind of environment. Yeah, they'll probably be going over but, to Cult Classic. That's what I would yeah. think. I mean, you know, listen, you listen to music. Well, I see it as a convenience for someone who wants a more urban type of lifestyle in a rural area. You know, we don't offer that here. So, you know, it's not small, it's not Centerville town area, but it's just a little more, a little different. So, um, so we, we heard what he said, we understood, we, we committed ourselves to um, being a, you know, stop against that when it, when it does come, when those complaints do come, which they inevitably will from someone at some point to us likely, to our management team. One of the things we will explain, express to them is remind them of um, we, is, our, is that discussion. But also we, we are looking into the legalities behind potentially putting something in the document just to say, hey, you know, Jim brought up, he used to live next to the train tracks. They made him sign something that said, you understand? Right. You yeah, live next train to the train goes tracks. by at two o'clock every morning. Right, so <laughs> we have to explore that potential. Right for, party calls. For the lease. Is that what it's called? <laughs> <laughs> Alan might get a second place there. The weekend place. Uh, um, so anyway, so we feel like we've adequate, we've addressed it as much as we can as an adjacent property owner. We talked to them. We said, keep, you know, we'll keep talking. We've given them our commitment um, to make sure people know what they're getting. And if someone comes in and, they're, and we ascertain that they want a real quiet lifestyle, we're going to discourage them. From running there, but, and we do have other options to offer them. So hopefully, we can sort of find a better place. Okay. That answers your question. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Any Thank other questions? No. I'm good. No other we questions. We haven't heard from any of the other surrounding businesses. You know, anything negative from them. We did talk to a few of the other businesses. You know, in case you need someone, need, if someone needs a place to live, we're going to have some, and they were excited about that. So. Very good. 
Thank you. Perfect. Sure. All right. <clears throat> Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 5 0. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alan. Hold on. Okay. Alan's not going yet. Oh. Um, so, to Schedule A. Where are we? I know where we're at on allocation. We get that thrown in our face. Where are we at on flow? Compare. It really doesn't change month to month. So you're still got about 30,000 minus this for commercial flow. But I mean, your actual flow? Yeah, I'm just wondering where we're at on that. Uh, How close are we on? We have been averaging 2.4 or 2.5. I think it dropped to 2.2 .2 last month because it's meant to dry. Dry, yeah. But it's temporary. Plus, that's spread over 36 months. So it's just a blip. Schedule A hadn't really moved since the last time you looked at it. Okay. That's a good thing, I guess. And how many more uh, How many more have we put online since the last time we talked about it, do you think, down on Sunken Island? Um, we're probably averaging 10 in Tower Gardens, existing homes, and maybe five new homes in, in uh, Canal Island State, Roanoke, so maybe 15 a 15? month. 15? So that's not really that big. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. The me. Anything else? No, that's... Well, I would like to thank you uh, on behalf of all the employees at Public Works for the budget and you know, its recondition of their value. Thank Absolutely. you. Good. Mm -hmm. And it's good to see you thank smile, you. Alan. Thank you. <laughs> and I love the tie, by the way. Yes. I love the tie. <laughs> yep. All right, that's all we had for uh, Public Works. We can uh, continue on with our action items under tab number three. We want to continue on? Or... Yep. All right. All right, uh, tab three, item one, page one is a proclamation. This is a proclamation 2334, character counts, pillar of the month, fairness. Proclamation 23-34, whereas Queen Anne's County has declared a character counts community, and whereas all citizens have been called upon to accept the six pillars of character and embrace them in our daily lives and activities and to model exemplary examples. Whereas Character Count's Pillar of the Month for June is fairness, and whereas fairness means being impartial and just with a lack of favoritism towards one side or another. Whereas if there is a game, each side has an equal amount of mixed ability players and referees that make fair calls. Whereas when playing or participating in activities, following the rules and laws and do not cheat, and whereas, treat everyone equitably no matter what they look like, act like, think like. And whereas, in whatever you do in life, be honest, take responsibility, and exhibit respect. And now, therefore, we, the county commissioners of Queen Anne's County, do hereby designate Character Count's Pillar of the Month for June to be fairness. And this was written by Miss Martin's fifth grade class at Kennard Elementary School and signed by the county commissioners of Queen Anne's County. I think of all six pillars, fairness is my favorite. Yeah? Remember that on the golf course. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Commissioner Corcorina, for reciting that. It's great. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, tab 3, item 2, pages 2 through 24. This is the Upper <laughs> Workforce Investment Board. This is the Local Workforce Development Area Memorandum of Understanding that we are and is here for renewal for the 2023-2025 term uh, between the uh, Local Workforce Development Board, the American Job Center, and the Chief Local Elected Official here in Queen Anne's County. This is a great program to help provide uh, folks that need a job to the resources to, uh, to get reemployed here in the county. I move to execute the Upper Shore Workforce Investment Board Memorandum of Understanding for 2023 to 2025. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? And they will also be the recipients of a pretty good um, influx of money via Kerwin here shortly, too, for additional uh, workforce stuff. Really? Yeah, so everything that was earmarked within the CTE part of mm -hmm. Kerwin actually is being managed by the uh, investment boards in the various areas. Wow, that's that's smart. Is that good? Yeah. Good. Good idea. Excellent. Is that per student? It's for uh, work placement. Um, no, I mean scholarships, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you need. I know, I know they support a lot of CDL drivers right now. That they basically pay for them to go get it to get their license. Nice. Throw it. So. Okay. Excellent. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. So moved. 
All right, thank you, commissioners. Uh, item three on pages 25 through 42 is uh, Royal Legacy. This is an agreement of sale and a uh, project agreement for the Blue Stem Farms LLC. And this is for 225 acres owned by the Blue Stream Farms, which is ready to be submitted to, M to the Department of Natural Resources for review and final approval to the Foreman Branch Royal Legacy area. And Don, you want to have anything for that? I move to execute the Royal Legacy Agreement of Sale and Project Agreement for the Blue Stem Farms LLC property. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion here? Been there, done this one. That's right. Just noted that POS funded, no county funds are being utilized for this, so it's another. We have open space money. Yeah. Job. Yes. yeah. Yes, Great job. All right. Well, yep. since there's no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. There will be one more coming in front of you probably the next month. I'm waiting for a title commitment on that. That'll be an additional 52.2 acres. So for that uh, total, we got $1,307,452 with no county money needed. Very good. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. 277 acres we're going to get preserved with zero county money. That's good stuff. That's real return on investment there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 1.3 million on zero investment. I was just going to say that's a 1.3 million We can, add, we can return. add that. We can add that. We can edge that right into the numbers to reduce. Yeah. Sure. Reduce the the you know, I mean throw that throw that 276 acres in with the uh, with the other acreage. Mm -hmm. So Don, just quick because of the long conversation we had before, sure. I don't want to go yes. down that in the rabbit hole with it all. But so mm -hmm. as we approach like the preservation goals. Yes. And obviously solar can't go on preserved land. Correct. Where is where is that line going to cross? Any idea? I mean, where we're going to get to I mean, where we're there's almost no at 50% land, right now. There's well, no land ready because it's all preserved. No, we're not going to close. But uh, again, it, it, we're going to. I mean, it's yes. the way we're going. So with the deed restricted open space, TDR transfer development <clears> rates that we had over the years, the non-contiguous development rates, state funded um, preservation, Maryland Environmental Trust, private conservation groups, we are literally at 42% mm -hmm. of the county's ag land is now preserved. We're at, we're at approximately 85,000 acres. So we're getting there. And um, an additional 100,000. I didn't, yeah, I didn't have a chance to touch on the applications that went in this year. This is more applications than I've submitted in probably close to 15 years. And the reason why um, the budget this year is $95 million statewide, which is $25 million more than last year. So in discussion with my local Ag Advisory Board, we had voted to submit 15 applications and the state director from Mouth called me back and said, I would recommend that you increase it to 20 applications. And the reason being- Wow, you haven't heard that in a long time. I know, right? <laughs> The reason being is because our 23 application, fiscal year 23 application, we started out <laughs> with um, $4 million. With this additional $25 million that's coming in for fiscal year 24, we're going to start out with our initial allocation of $1.4 million more. And depending on acreage, that could get us one or two more farms right out of the gate. So you're talking 10 farms. We had eight farms last year. We could get 10 farms right out of the gate. And because there's still counties that do not participate, Anne Arundel County has one application. Right. Prince George's County. You get second round stuff. Correct. Yeah. And she is anticipating that the second round allocation is going to be approximately $20 million. Mm. And all she, of it. And she pretty much said, if you're right around that 50% mark of asking price of appraised value, you're going to get an offer. She is anticipating, this is her projection, that we're going to get 15 to 18 farms this next round, mm -hmm. which would be incredible for us. So, That's why it's so important. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for approving the budget for our additional employee because rural legacy, this, I usually send in the top three farms in one rural legacy area, got an email from the director, you need to send top three in both areas. So if we get six farms in rural legacy, and 15 to 18 in mouth. So I, I don't know how I'm going to get it all done, but with an additional uh, person, that'll help. That would help me tremendously. Well, plus I'm going to ask you to do something else, and and to, to along the line of questioning about the solar is so. Can you give us an overview of what's in preservation? Because when we consciously looked at the solar, we looked at the transmission lines. Yes. So I'm curious now. Obviously, some of the farms that are on Kent Island. 
you yes. know, uh, Route 8 and all that aren't in preservation, I would assume. There are some out there. Are some but down there's there, probably actually. some that aren't, yes. right? Yes, so that have been in for a very long time. Right, and so those farms are probably outliers. They're, they're so far away from the transmission lines, they're not going to be ones that the solar company is going to be eager to go get. I think we need to start concentrating on looking at that pathway because they want, you know, the text amendment still out there for the toe, what I call the toe in the, in, in the, in the sand with the one acre inside of uh -huh, our uh -huh, set off uh -huh. and then you can take 800 acres adjacent yeah. to it. Yeah. Just to see where that map would play out. Just so kind of we can maybe be more strategic about beyond what we're looking, but to start looking. I'm kind of concerned though, and, and I agree with what you're saying, but I, I'm concerned that if the if it is the large amount that we're anticipating the state that's going to force upon us another 12,000 acres of solar, right. that they're, they're not going to worry about the transmission and they're going to put their own transmission line in. Well, where are you going to do that though? See, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, but you're talking about that. See, here's here's always been my thing with Jim. I hate to go off on a tangent, but is the, the, the schedule they have is so aggressive. I mean, this is 2023. They yeah. want this 100% in 2035. All right. Those don't exist today. Mm -hmm. I mean, none of that infrastructure exists, and it takes time to engineer it and, and produce it and get it done. But we're watching it from the Bay, you know, from the Bay Bridge all the way up Route 301. But that project's been in the works for 10 years. See, that's how long it takes to get something. Yeah, like but that, that wasn't rushed, probably. I, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't disagree I mean, with you, but I, yeah, I just I, I see what you're saying. That yes, they, they built the Pentagon in 10 but, months. But what's so. that take? That takes money. Yeah. So where is that money going to come from to backfill to get that done? Is my right. point. So. So in, in line of what you're saying is your focus or their focus for solar is to align it with the overhead transmission lines or substations. And of course, it would have to be tillable land. They're not going to put it in woods. They're not going to clear woods. It's too right. cost. It's not cost effective to Correct. clear woods. Correct. Then you would have a problem with Maryland Department of Environment and um, Army Corps of Engineers because right. the majority of woodland has wetlands. So that's not that's not even a feasible thing to look at. So it's tillable land, right? Yes. So the focus would be tillable land, large tracts of land Correct. or adjacent. So and there are when we were doing a, or when I was doing a study on the proposal of making 301 a scenic byway, I looked at from Millington to Queenstown to see what farms were tillable on 301 that have not been put into <clears throat> preservation. And that's kind of that corridor, what you're thinking about the transmission line. Right. Am I correct in yes. saying yeah. that? Yes. Yep. There was only 17 farms available. Hmm. So I can go back and look at that again. Just how many acres? Yeah, how many acres that might be? Just right. So if we would focus on the tillable land part of it, not necessarily the woodland part of it, because if you ride up and down 301, which I do every day, if you right. look at those properties, there is a tremendous amount of woodland yes. on 301. Mm -hmm. yep. A yep. tremendous amount. But if you're talking from 301 in, what is it, a mile? Two miles. Mile, yeah, each mile, way. Each mile, mile, each way. Okay. So, mile, so that puts a different face on it. Right. And um, Mouth is willing to go to battle with the solar companies it's, about adverse possession. But but here's the thing. I know what Jim's point is, and I agree with him because it's that one that sits in the back of my head. You're going to have two different state agencies fighting each other right. here. Correct. Because you're going to have the preservation people on this side saying, let's preserve farmland. And then you're going to have the people that want the solar going, well, wait a minute, we need to take that farmland. What really constrains me, honestly, the biggest thing, is they're going to allow preserved farmland to be used for solar. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, been, what scares that's me, been a topic. That's what scares me more than anything. That has been a topic at, at, uh, at the land preservation meetings. And the assistant attorney generals, we have four that work with mouth projects. They have assured us that it would be a very, very long, drawn out and expensive battle to do that adverse possession because that's what it would have to be. It would have to be an adverse possession case because of the public monies that have been, been invested right. Right. into yeah. this land and for the, preservation. The legislature couldn't vote to do it? That would have to go through Comar and that would have to be. I mean, they could, they could they vote could to do it, it yes, but that doesn't, it doesn't mean they're going to happen because then it would. gets challenged. I, they, the uh, attorneys have also said you would have so many le private landowners that would also piggyback on that case and that suit because of that's their property. And I can only tell you from being through that court case with that adverse possession on a five acre piece of woods, it was literally between six and eight months just fighting over that one small piece of land. So, you know, when you start talking about thousands of acres that the public has already paid for, and then you want the public to pay for again. Right. You know, the problem also is, you know, we'll, we'll move on after this, but, yeah. you know, what, 
once they do take these lands and they want to make them solar and they strip us of, of our regulatory authority, now you have homes, strips of homes that will have solar in their backyard. Correct. You know, before we were able to say no because it's affecting these homes, right. not anymore. So. And in land preservation has said, we guarantee you that have you have that scenic view shed forever. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden it's yeah. going to change. Gone, right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Correct. So. Okay. So, but yes, I will. That was my roundtable discussion. There you, you go. You don't have to ask me later. I just it will take me a while that. to put that together, but yes. But that's I will. fine. I, yeah. I'm just curious where, yep. you know, strategically we've got to start thinking about that because it's coming. So. Okay. Yep. I will take care of that. We like Thank you. the 10 year map too, you know, 10 years ago, nine years, eight, seven, all the way up. See it filling in all the little puzzle pieces. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. I got two years to retire. I How much do you want? <laughs> That's enough time to work on that map for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. While you're training a new person? Come yeah. on. Yeah. That's, I mean, that free that's time. all I have to do. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Now you have a driver, so now as you're going up and down 301, you work on that. They drive. Yeah, it's all good. There you all go. Good. Yeah, and yeah. after I just checked my 60 farms for monitoring, yeah, then That's I got right. lots of the time to do that. Thanks, Thank Donna. you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Donna. Great. Uh, All right, commissioners, moving on. So uh, item number four on pages uh, 43 through 51 is the Community Development Block Grant for the Sellersville Senior, uh, Senior Center Roof Amendment. This is for Foxtown. This is an amendment to a CDBG grant application for the Senior Center. Uh, this increases the grant uh, from 450000 to 650000 and the funds will be used to uh, not only replace the roof on the senior center, but also the Foxtown uh, apartments. I move to execute the uh, community development block grant number MD23-CD-2 grant amendment. Actually, the motion is to have Jim sign. Yeah. Right? Yeah, excuse me. That's all good. That's all right. Good. That's, that's beautiful. beautiful. Second. Yeah. That works. Yep. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? No, no, no. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, next up, we have two broadband projects. Uh, night number five, item five, is the long driveway program. It's on pages 52 through 59. And this is a request uh, that stems from our advisory commission on broadband to create a Queen Anne's County long driveway program, which will provide grants to property owners with long driveways to connect to nearby internet services uh, in their communities. We do anticipate receiving about a $1 million grant this year and for that program. And we've been advised that we ought to get this up and running sooner versus later. And we are recommending that we uh, put in uh, 250,000 local dollars, which is uh, funded with ARPA, to commence with the program uh, 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 as soon as we can. I move to approve the request to provide 250000 from the Public Fiber Infrastructure Funds to begin the implementation of the Queen Anne's County Long Driveway Program in anticipation of receiving a $1 million state grant to support the expansion of broadband in Queen Anne's County. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? I just say this is another home run by the Broadband Advisory Commission. This oh, is yeah. just thinking way outside the box. Yeah. I mean, yeah. people aren't going to have to pay to get them driveways done. Now, Megan, can you come up? Because one question I had, because I read it, is middle mile's got to be in, correct? Yes. Right, and last mile up to? Up to 1,500 feet. So we're trying to make okay. it so if broadband or if there's an ISP or internet service provider already right in front of your driveway, then it should be a no-brainer. But if you're within 1,500 feet of a service that's already provided to your neighbor or somebody close by, we'll consider that okay. to try to get, because I know that there's some people that are just a little bit further down from an intersection. We don't want to say no blanketly without, you know, just taking a look and seeing like really how, how much more would it cost? I just you wanted today? you to get that on record so that yeah. you don't get inundated with calls of, um, I'm 1,476 feet, should yeah. I yeah. apply? Well, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's just yeah. everybody should, anybody that can apply, right. go ahead and apply. We will be, we don't have an application process ready yet. We right. really want to wait until after the fiscal year, FY24, to kind of get rolling with this, to give us an opportunity to get that um, set up, kind of do it through the GIS, uh, like we did with the broadband survey have people be able to look and see where they are on the map, what's already going to be served by another ISP, because we have a lot of grants that we've received um, in roundabout ways from the state where they've awarded challenged um, areas and things like that. So we have a, a nice map that kind of depicts where and where you aren't really qualified to to put in an application. So we'll be working with people trying to make, trying to explain that more clearly to everyone so they understand 
if they do or don't because I know a lot of people are kind of in a holding pattern waiting for internet service providers to get to them because of the grants that have been awarded a lot of the um, internet service providers have up to three years to build um, once the grants awarded so we have a map online that we um, kind of show how long it could potentially take all the internet service providers are really um, ambitiously building I think that people are seeing trucks everywhere Mm -hmm. um, Chop Tank was recently given a, a very large award in the northern part of the county. Talkies everywhere. Um, yeah, Comcast is coming to yeah. the island, so there's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot going on. Is, yeah, there's all kinds of things on. happening with uh, franchise agreements underway and things like that. And so these are more. Interest. These are more. This is more of you chipping away at that last five percent. That that yes. hard five percent. These yeah. are those programs yeah. are going to yeah. help get mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. outliers that mm -hmm. none mm -hmm. of these, you know. Exactly. So get us over the hump on those. Right. So. Yep. That's right. Do you think that, uh, what percentage do you think will will pay the 10% um, along, uh, for the long driveways? Well, from the people I've talked to, I know that a lot of these people will pay the 10%. So like it's 1350 are, tops? 1350 is the maximum that the county can provide. It's it's a 90-10 split. So the county would provide 90% of that. The resident would be expected to do the 10 up to up to $15,000. So overall, if it costs 15000 the county will put in thirteen five and the resident would be expected to put in fifteen hundred. But not necessarily. That unless much. they, they be. right, unless they are. Yeah, and um, some of these, some of these long driveways. I mean, they're not running fifteen thousand anymore with some of the no. with the new yeah. ISPs. They're not charging like somebody else was. Like five would look up. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. yeah. It's a lot less expensive than it has been in the past. The numbers that I'm hearing. So. Right. Me too. I think these will be well in line for most people. And if they want to look, let's face it. A lot of these are farms. Um, mm -hmm. You know, yep. that are out there anyway, and knew that it was going to be a challenge to get to them. So, right. is Files coming over here, or is it? No. We've had some conversations with Verizon. They're mostly focusing on their wireless. They're, they're looking at the five G thing, I think. Yeah. Right. So yeah. It's, there's a lot of a lot of movement in that area, but definitely. Is it true that they ran across the bridge? They, they they do have I think they have some service here. They they told me that they don't have fiber. So can they here, tap into that? Yeah, I don't like well, they, they have to be running something to their towers. I was so gonna I'm say they have fiber they, for their cell towers. I don't know that it's they I don't can think do they both. Fiber. I don't think There's they can no do both with it. Because you got you got to have dedicated fiber for broadband versus the cell. So Yeah, I'm hoping it's just not the population for them, I guess. Plus they're looking at that bridge, whatever's gonna happen with that bridge, they're probably worried about running their main line across there. <laughs> They're getting ready to tear all the decking off. It's like uh, uh, it'll be outdated by then. <laughs> Fios, that's, a, that's like a dial-up. Jim will go out there as a flag guy. Don't hit the fiber for Verizon. Yeah, we're hopeful though. We've had a lot of conversations with Verizon. They've expressed more interest this past year than they than they have before. So we're you know we're always hoping that. And the more you know, we're welcoming all these ISPs. Please come. Mm -hmm. Please come to our county. Oh yeah. Well, you've done a great job. Thank you. Really yeah, Her whole group has, yeah, and, and all the transitions of them, they've all done. Everybody's been, Everybody's been very. Mm -hmm. Conversations. Is Star, all right. is Starlink remotely affordable? Uh, I believe it's gone up a little bit. Um, I think it's around, is it five ninety nine now? I'd have to look online. It was like 500 originally for the antenna, and then it was like 120 I think, for the connection. From what I've heard for, from people that have been and using what's their, it, what's they, their monthly fee? Uh, I think it's I think it's up to like one twenty nine. Yeah, it's now. It's over hundred bucks. Like yeah, but it's it's an improvement from a lot of other satellite that, yeah. from the past. So that's mainly Price area, Ingleside. Maybe? No, we have we have uh, fiber. I know I know people on Ken Island that have Starlink. Do they really? Okay. Yeah, you get out on the peninsulas and on all the some of those out there. Yeah, they don't have fiber down there yet. And they people that have like four or five kids in the house all watching Netflix on Starlink. Yeah. So it's just <laughs> that's what people do. <laughs> We're playing their Xbox or whatever it is. So. All right, we have a motion and a second uh, that. Uh, that we approve the request to provide 250000 from the public fiber infrastructure funds to begin the implementation of the Queen Anne's County Long Driveway Program in anticipation of receiving $1 million state grant to support the expansion of broadband in Queen Anne's County. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Well done. Excellent. One more. Thank you, Commissioners. One more. Now, next to item number six on pages 60 through 70 
is the Rural Maryland Council Infrastructure Grant, also for broadband. Uh, they have grant funds available for broadband infrastructure expansion in some of the uh, small pocket areas that we uh, aren't going to have coverage on. So this is um, a 75 local, 25% RMC split, and this is a request to allocate 188000 for uh, a pending grant award of about a quarter million for these hard-to-reach areas. I move to approve the request to provide $187,500 from the Public Fiber Infrastructure Budget to participate in Rural Maryland Prosperity Investment Fund Rural Maryland Council Grant. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, so moved. Thank you. Right. thank you, Commissioners, and thank you, Megan, and the uh, Broadband Advisory thank Council. You. Did an excellent work, and it's great to see all this broadband everywhere. We're gonna we're gonna get everybody covered, connected here soon. Thank you. Thank you all. Please extend our appreciation. I will absolutely. Yes, Mark. Thank you. All right. All right, Commissioners. Moving on. Item number seven on pages seventy-one and seventy-two. This is um, uh, County Ordinance eighteen ten. This was a, um, a property tax credit that was issued to certain veterans and their spouses. Uh, back in 2018, uh, this ordinance was adopted to provide a tax credit as authorized by the Maryland Legislature for the primary residence of uh, uh, retired veterans and their spouses, and it does sunset after uh, fiscal year 2024. Obviously, there has been some interest uh, from the Retired Military Officers Association to amend that ordinance, and in order to do that, we would have to draft a new bill uh, a new ordinance, uh, introduce that, have a hearing, and um, adjust that uh, sunset what, clause what is if the, desired. What's the, is the current one 20%? Current one. I want to say yes. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. 20? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And this is for, it's uh, only for those that uh, uh, served a, a retirement, made it to retirement. Right. Yeah, this was a fiscal for, note on this. Yeah, is like 65 30. years old individuals that uh, or honorably discharged and or disabled uh, and retired members of the uniformed services in the United States as defined by um, military service reserves in 10 USC section 101. Right. But we also uh, had a fiscal note on that. that yeah, um, we have about 59 citizens that claim this credit currently. And over the past uh, five years, it ranges from an FY20, the first year, $31,000 in uh, credits uh, to FY24 is estimated at 45,000. So it's going up a little bit each year. Uh, 21 was 31,000, 22 was 37, 23 was 40,000. So, uh, and 45,000 uh, for estimated for fiscal 24. And it is a 20% credit. And we, you just need a consensus. I'm, I mean, just I, consensus. I if you want us to draft an ordinance to uh, extend yeah, that, hearing. Can we, consensus. Uh, yeah. uh, can we? Uh, I don't. Can we write in not a sunset this time, but a review? Right. Yes, we so, can. So do a five-year, eight-year, whatever review period. Uh, you know what I mean? To just re-up it, maybe the cost of living change or something. Well, I think you have to come every year. Is it every year you have to? Prove that you're still alive, you still qualify. There's, yeah, there's, they have to make an application yeah. to, to yeah. show. Yeah, to yeah but I'm just looking at the overall anyway. benefit, maybe. You know what I mean? So every, you don't want a sunset. You, you want it in perpetuity. With a review. You know what I'm saying? So, like, every five years it gets reviewed for whether is it too low, is it too high. It's, you know what I mean? Just to yeah. have it reviewed. It's, it's what you should do with pretty much every law to see if it's outdated because maybe something better is there. I think that's probably why they – We I did some research on trying to figure out why it was uh, – it, it expired after five years, and I think it was exactly that reason they wanted – commissioners wanted to review it after five years to see – you know, if it was but effective. But I think we can build in a review to the law that says the commissioners will review it or right. shall yeah. review it every yeah. five years, not necessarily sunset it. Okay. Because I just think that, because we were right up against the. Yeah, we can we can do on that. One, yeah, we can do that. Okay. We'll have Patrick draft something up for the uh, meeting on the 27th for uh, consideration, and we can introduce it then. Okay. I'll do it right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Last two items, we have two budget amendments for our sheriff's office. Uh, budget amendment uh, item number eight, budget amendment CC57, and this is for the Police Accountability Communication and Transparency Grant, and this is a technical amendment to move 16,000 from salary and benefits to equipment and uh, to fund the purchase of bike helmets, training equipment, and uh, protective gear for the Wait, sheriff's well, office. 
This is a budget amendment CC 57 item eight on page 73. So the police accountability community and transparency grant program. Yes, correct. So that's the police accountability board. No, that's just the state. That's just a, a grant program, which we are going to seek uh, some dollars for right. the police accountability board for fiscal 24. And I've already talked to the sheriff about that. And I'm thinking we can get probably close to $40,000 out of this bucket to, uh, to cover expenses for the police accountability board. But this is other, they've had this grant for a number of years for okay. police accountability activities, body camera, those kinds of things. Okay. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. I'm good. Yeah. So, do you make a motion? No? Okay. How about I make the motion? <laughs> <laughs> Since I asked the question before a motion was made. <laughs> okay. Before you figured you were I move that we approve <laughs> budget amendment CC-57. Thank it. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing more. none, all those in favor no signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? One missing. That's why you got to do stuff out of order. That's all good. It's all good. Okay. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. Our last item tonight is uh, item number nine on page 74. This is Budget Amendment CC58. This is for the Sheriff's Office, the Byron Justice Assistance Grant. And this is from the Governor's Office of Crime Control and Prevention. It's awarded uh, to the Department. Uh, reimburses for purchases of training equipment for public safety and medical attention equipment. Uh, funds are paid out on a reimbursement basis up to thirty-three thousand dollars. Like AEDs and things like that. Okay. Well, then uh, I'm on a roll. So uh, <laughs> I make a motion that we approve Budget Amendment CC-58. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. So moved. Five up. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. That's all the action items for this evening. We can. Uh, Entertain any press and public comments if we have any. Nobody signed up. Anybody under the chairs over there? <laughs> you guys, you guys have nothing to say. Okay. So there you go. There, it's full out there, but they said. I think you're good, Jim. To move on. Turn it back to the commissioners for a roundtable. As promised, <coughs> no, just skip me. I'm good. No, I, I blew my roundtable before. So we'll go to Patrick. Uh, we had a great celebration at Juneteenth that Commissioner Parker Reno will talk about. And um, we had a, uh, a conference call about the Youth Crisis Center. A little bit of a stumbling block there, speed bump. But we're going uh, to work through that. And you can talk about the home of all Okay. Good. All right. Uh, Mr. Dumanel. Um do you want to talk about this morning's meeting? And if you want. Okay. Cool. Okay. So I actually have two things. So I had an opportunity to um, uh, show up to the rough roofing ribbon cutting. I know that's always been a mystery. They bought that building on the corner there in Queenstown and coming soon for like a long time. But they had a ribbon cutting. Um, and the highlight for me um, was the opportunity to meet Justin Tucker the greatest kicker of all time in the NFL, um, which when I posted it on Facebook, everybody thought it was Bruce Groves. So I'm like, why, why Bruce? Do you get but, that a lot, Bruce? I'm Bruce sure. used to be the greatest kicker yeah, before, yeah. before Tucker that. <laughs> he was dethroned. It's a sad, sad day. And then um, uh, Commissioner President Jim Moran and myself and, and Todd Mon attended the uh, – the economic development and tourism walkthrough at Sour Compressors with our Secretary of Commerce, uh, Kevin Anderson, uh, which was great. And then we had a little sit down and a powwow. And uh, I have to say, I would certainly be remiss if, and I know we got a round of applause for Heather and her team at economic development and tourism, but I, I tell you what, that department, they knock it out of the ballpark every time, every time. They're kicking 66 yarders. See that little weave there? Yes, I did. Okay. You yes, are all <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, um, no more coffee at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> no? no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm good. You're good? Yep. All right. Chris? All right. Well, um, as Patrick said, we were at the Juneteenth celebration and uh, at the invitation of Mr. Clay Washington, who is always a, a great host. and does a lot of great things with his group. So the Canard Alumni Association, um, Patrick and I got to 
accept this plaque from them uh, to the commissioners, thanking the commissioners, not just this board, but boards, you know, I guess going back several boards of commissioners for the continued support for uh, the Kennard Alumni uh, Association um, and everything they're doing with the Kennard African American History uh, Museum. They have now dedicated a uh, resource library as well. So any members of the community, um, if you have, if they're looking for any, either donations or um, if you have for copying any uh, historically significant documents for the African American community in Queen Anne's County, please go by the uh, Kennard Alumni Association to bring those materials for them so they can keep a great record of those historical things there. It was a great um, event. Uh, former Commissioner Wilson and former Commissioner Billups were also there. So I think the commissioners had a really good showing for that event. Um, you're talking about Hold the Ball Gang, right? Sure. Right. No, no, Chris, to give them a, better, uh, even a bigger shout out, me and Jim attended the farm to table the other night uh, when the smoke uh, was on the horizon. Um, and they had to pivot. It was going to be an outdoor event up at Godfrey's Farm, but the, obviously the smoke, nobody was going to be outside. So they right. actually, the Kennard Alumni Center, stepped up, opened up their house. They had the event in there on about 18 hours notice, and it was phenomenal, and they did a great job. So, and I'm oh, Always that, yeah. great community members. Yep. Always. I mean, just give them a shout out for. Was that in the museum part or the school part? In the school. It's in the main hall that they use for their events. So, yeah, they did a great job with it, too. So, with that being said, uh, I'll Same. tag onto, onto that uh, farm to table. Uh, you know, Todd and I both spent our money on Wagyu, and we're going to put it to the test. So, <laughs> it, it, was, it was an awesome event. They did an outstanding job. It was good to see uh, all those farmers and producers stand up and talk a little bit of why they're there and their passion and, and what, you know, what, what they bring to, literally, to the table. So, it, it was. It was a great time. So I can wipe that one off my list. Uh, I was Patrick, myself, and Todd, we were on a, a conference call, a Zoomer, for um, the Witsit Center and getting a game plan to what we wanted, you know, what we think uh, the best path to take to getting the adolescents in there. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're going to take somewhat of an approach like we do for the Bay Bridge. We're going to build a coalition, get, get uh, you know, the, the counties that are interested together, get a work excuse me, a work group together and, and start formatting uh, some uh, direction for the, for the state to see if, in fact, the state will, will move along with this because we feel that, you know, they should be the one to, you know, to fund this. It's their building, and we want to just, you know, again, move it forward, and, and that's, the, you know, the, the avenue we're going to take there to start off. Um, I want to let everybody know that, that handles the, uh, the rides on the Cross Island Trail. The light is finally coming. Uh, in front of Ken Island High School uh, to cross over Route 18. The, the permits are done, so hopefully that'll be a light there that uh, instead of walking up there and just looking both ways, you can hit a button and it turned red and get you across the road. Uh, Todd and I also had a, a Zoom meeting with um, State Highway uh, to talk about connecting our two trails and coming up from Route 8 and, and where we can put a possible overpass for 50 uh, pedestrian crossings uh, with again with with lights and and all that is in in the process so you know I'm glad to see that moving forward it's been who 25 years uh, without getting these connected and, and we're getting close we've, we've got a lot of right away so we're going to start uh, uh, formulating uh, the engineering to start from uh, Mattapique uh, excuse me from what's the marina down there if you want no the other oh, one uh, Mattapique, yeah. Oh, Mattapique, okay, so I'm, all right, last fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From Mattapique Pier and, and heading north to get that all the way up behind uh, uh, Target. So, you know, that's that's probably the first thing, to, you know, the low-hanging fruit. Um, now, I guess I'll finish with the, with the Bay Bridge. First off, for anybody that wants to testify and be in, uh, there's the, the Bay Crossing study, uh, part of the NEPA, for pedestrians and bikes, is June 27th from 6.30 to 7.45 at night. You can go on the uh, uh, Bay Bridge or MDTA's website and get the link to uh, sit in and listen to this. I also want to you know, let everybody know, which I've noticed in the last couple of weeks, is on Sunday nights, we're all, or excuse me, Saturdays, Saturday afternoons, I'm always used to, okay, three, three lanes eastbound, and right around 1 o'clock, they switch it around, 
and you get three lanes westbound. Well, the last two Saturdays, that hasn't been the case. As a matter of fact, there was a two and a half mile backup uh, two Saturdays ago westbound, and it was 3.30 in the afternoon. So we have a great, very good working relationship with MDTA, and I made a phone call and, and said, you know, what's going on? Normally, ContraFlow ends at 1 o'clock. And uh, the new system that they are doing is, or the new regulations are going to follow is, the side that has the most traffic as they're counting the vehicles is the side that gets the third lane. So, you know, if, if the public sees two and a half mile backups on Kent Island, that's because, and it's three o'clock in the afternoon or four o'clock in the afternoon, that's because eastbound traffic is still has not dropped down below the count for westbound traffic. So just keep that in mind. It's, it's not that they're, you know, picking one side or the other. It's all on volume. And I, th I can right, understand right, that right. and I can respect that. Mm -hmm. So... So that's what they're doing there, um, and I guess that's enough for me. Right, Tom? You got anything you want to add? You sure? Okay. Margie? Okay. No phone calls? Okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. There we go. Thank you.